What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Pitching Ninja's filthiest pitches of the day. I am Pitching Ninja. I'm here with a hungover, Will Leahy. <laughs> we'll start with the whip around the league. Marcus Stroman had six strikeouts and in six innings, giving up no runs. His ERA this year is at a sterling 0, 0.00. That seems unsustainable to me. He had these painted two seamers. He seemed to be painting over and over with them, as well as his changeup and K strut. He faced Yusei Kikuchi, who had seven strikeouts in five and a third innings, giving up no runs on four hits. He had these fastballs and curveballs. Bobby Miller had three strikeouts in the first inning, and that's kind of all she wrote. He had this changeup slider and fastball and finished the game with three strikeouts in one and two-thirds innings because he got knocked out, giving up five runs and four hits in those one and two-thirds. He faced Kyle Hendricks, who had four strikeouts in four innings and had these change-ups, including his cut change-up and his regular change-up. That regular one moves 20 inches arm side. And that cut one, it's kind of brutal. He deliberately cuts his change-up to make it run away from a hitter. Zach Littell had five strikeouts in five innings, giving up one run. He had these fastball splitter and slider. He faced Austin Gomber, who had seven strikeouts in four innings, giving up two runs and had this change-up and slider. Hunter Green had his good fastball yesterday, 99 and 100 miles an hour, and had six Ks in six innings, giving up one run. He also had this nasty slider. And he faced Jose Quintana, who had four strikeouts in five and two-thirds innings, giving up one run, and had this nasty curveball. Aaron Nola had four Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up no runs. He had these nasty knuckle curves. And he faced Patrick Corbin, who had six strikeouts in six innings, giving up four runs, and had this wicked slider. Dylan Cease had seven strikeouts in six innings, giving up only two runs. He had these sliders. Of course he had these sliders. That's what Dylan Cease does. He faced Jordan Hicks, who had five strikeouts in seven innings, giving up one earned run. He had these two seamers, this splitter and a sweeper. And I thought he looked solid, and he has looked solid as a starter. I kind of like the revamped Jordan Hicks, the lower velo, better command, and nasty stuff still. Yeah, what was his highest uh, velo? Jordan Hicks topped out at a virtual sloth-like 99 miles an hour on his two-seamer. Spencer Strider had four strikeouts in four innings, giving up five runs. He had these sliders, but his velo was definitely off, and he experienced elbow discomfort and needs an MRI. So prayers up for Spencer Strider, because without Spencer Strider, my life has a little less meaning. Strider faced Tommy Henry, who had five strikeouts in five innings, giving up two runs, and had this nasty changeup. Eric Fetty, woo baby, squad, had four strikeouts in five innings, giving up one run. He had these two seamers, including this paintish two seamer. He faced Brady Singer, who had four strikeouts in six and a third innings, giving up one run. He had this four seam fastball, this two seamer, and these sliders, and picked up five swings and misses on his slider. Cody Bradford had four strikeouts in seven and two thirds innings, giving up only two hits. He had this nasty changeup. He faced Hunter Brown, who wasn't sharp Smoked at all yesterday, with three That's strikeouts and three innings, giving up five runs, and had this heater. Freddie Peralta, who is now the third favorite for the NL Cy Young. Is that right, Will? Fact check me on this, Will. Tied for second, actually. Him and Zach Allen are both plus 950, and Wheeler is at plus 550. Wow. Freddie Peralta on fire with seven strikeouts and five and two-thirds innings, giving up three runs. He had these fastballs, including this cheese at the knees, this curveball, and slider. And he faced Logan Gilbert, who had seven strikeouts and five and two-thirds innings. He did give up four runs, but had these cutters and splitters. And I freaking love his splitter. His splitter is like one of the seven wonders of the pitching world. He averaged 730 RPMs on his splitter this game, which is insanely low. He faced Cutter Crawford, who had five Ks in four and two-thirds innings, giving up one run. He had these fastballs, this sweeper, and of course, Cutter's cutter. Tarek Skubal looked really good for most of the game yesterday. He had nine strikeouts in six and a third innings, giving up four runs and only four hits. He had these heaters up to 99 miles an hour, as well as these sliders. And this one, the Brent Rooker, was absolutely disgusting. Look at this thing. And he also had these wicked changeups. His changeup overall is one of the filthiest pitches in baseball. He had nine whiffs on this changeup, four on his slider. And here's an overlay of his 99 mile an hour heater and 85 mile an hour changeup. And you can see what makes that combo a nightmare for hitters. In probably the most exciting matchup of young pitchers of the day yesterday, 
Grayson Rodriguez had seven Ks in six and a third innings, giving up two runs. He had these fastballs and curveballs, and I actually didn't think he had his change up at all yesterday, which is weird because that's probably his best pitch. He had no swings and misses on his changeup and still fought through the game with seven strikeouts. He also got the pitch in the snow, which freaking rocks. He faced Jared Jones, who is one of the most electric young pitchers you will see. He had seven strikeouts and six innings, giving up two runs. His fastball was up to 99.5 miles an hour. Got absolutely fired up after this strikeout. And nasty curveball and slider. Love his stuff. He led the day with 21 swings and misses, having more swings and misses than anybody else who pitched yesterday. Now on to relievers. Alex Lang, respect that turtleneck, had this curveball. Adam Adovino had these wicked two-seamers. Elvis Pergaro picked up a White Castle special and had this heater. Drew Smiley had these sick knuckle curves. Yanir Cano also pitched in the snow, and yes, that rhymes. And he had these change-ups and K-stairs. Camilo Duvall had this cutter and slider. Jason Foley, yes, the same Jason Foley that makes it here every day, had this absolutely gorgeously painted 97-mile-an-hour two-seamer with 21 inches of run. Look how pretty this pitch is. And here's an overlay of his slider out of the zone that got a swing and miss with a 98 mile an hour two seamer that's in that same tunnel. And you can see as a hitter, you're trying not to get fooled by that slider that you swung at off the plate. And instead he throws a two seamer right in that same tunnel that runs back and catches the plate. A nightmare to face. Craig Kimbrell had this fastball knuckle curve. Pierce Johnson threw 14 consecutive curveballs and got a sword on this one. He only threw curveballs yesterday in this outing. And Will, what is his nickname? Prince Albert. I I <laughs> cross my legs every time I freaking talk about this, dude. His curveballs had up to 3,131 RPMs. Trevor Richards had this fastball and change-ups. Cue the trumpets. Edwin Diaz had this slider and picked up his first save since coming back. Everybody, a round of applause for Edwin Diaz. Mets are on a heater. In non-major league-related stuff, Paul Skeens had six strikeouts in three innings, sitting 100. He would dominate in the majors right now. And speaking of ready for the major leagues right now, Chase Burns had 15 strikeouts last night, and look at this man's electric K-strut off the field. You should be praying right now your team drafts Chase Burns. Now on my top five pitches of the day. At number five, I have Pierce Johnson and his curveballs. At number four, I have Tarek Skubal and this wicked slider to Brent Rooker, as well as these change-ups. I can't pick with him. At number three, I have Jared Jones and his purely electric stuff. I mean, just recognize the young king. At number two, I have that perfectly painted two-seamer by Jason Foley. Doesn't get much prettier than that. And at number one, we have this absolutely ridiculous, perhaps the most <laughs> embarrassing strikeout in the history of man. This rising slider by Tyler Rogers. We're going to withhold this hitter's name to protect the shamed. It, it was Graham Pauly. Oh! Well. <laughs> hey, Pauly, you got hit in the face with this slider. What do you think? It's pretty good, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at this. He gets hit square in the shoulder and the face with a pitch he swung at. What in the world is this? And the best thing about it is I interviewed Logan Webb a couple of years ago, and he told me this was what everybody on the team thought would happen. I love watching him throw, and I love the swings. Like, I think everyone like made a joke about it, saying, like, dude, you're going to hit somebody in the head. Like, they're going to swing and hit them in the helmet like, at some point. And um, like, honestly, I, could, I think that will happen at some point. And now, the pitching ninja moment of Zen. This speaks for itself. Rafaela striking out with this beach ball. The wind got him. Yeah. To find out the launch angle. Got him twice. Yeah. It Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, third time. Oh, no, it's not third time it didn't go out. The fourth time the charm for Rafaela. My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm going to start out with Yoshinobu Yamamoto for 5Ks or more then take Bryce Miller for 5Ks or more, and top it off with Michael King for 6Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be? 